We learned some videos ago that you can express any wave function psi in terms of other wave functions phi. This expression doesn't change much in our freshly introduced Dirac notation. We can now write down the overlap of psi with a specific function phi k. If we multiply this result with phi k, we even get the specific part of psi that resembles phi k. We can interpret everything left of psi as an operator that projects onto phi k. It is hence aptly named a projector. This works with any wave function phi, but if we restrict it to being part of an orthonormal basis set, we can find a nice application. Consider the sum over the projectors of all wave functions of the basis set. Let's see how this acts on any old wave function psi. Every term of the projector picks its corresponding term in the expression of psi, gaining a prefactor cj, multiplies it with phi k, and then, well, we get out psi again. The sum over the projectors of all states of an orthonormal basis set has no effect whatsoever, and yet it will prove extremely useful. Because this object does not affect any wave functions, we call it a unit operator, and the fact that it is one is called a completeness relation. Now think of any operator O. Because a unit does not do anything, we can always multiply it with any operator expression. In our case, we do so from left and right. One side note on something I have not yet mentioned, because it has not been important yet. Operators, in general, do not commute. This means that the order in which you write them is important, and this is why I specifically mentioned the position from which I multiply. We can now plug in the completeness relation for any orthonormal basis phi, and thus find a more complicated expression for O. The most interesting part about this expression is the middle. It looks like an expectation value of O, but with in general different wave functions as the left and right entry. Nevertheless, this expression, when evaluated, gives you a number for every combination of the indices J and K. All numbers together then make up a matrix. We call it the matrix representation of O in the basis of phi. The calculation of an expectation value can now be written in yet another form. Phi m projected on phi j and k on n kill one summation respectively, so that we are left with only two sums. Alternatively, this is just a matrix sandwich between two vectors. No wave function is left in the expression and no integral. It all boils down to linear algebra. This simplification is so common and useful that many people start identifying the operator with its matrix representation. This is something you should be careful with though. The operator is an object that acts on wave functions in a particular manner, while the matrix is just a bunch of numbers which change if you pick another basis for your system. To distinguish between the two, I usually use calligraphic symbols for operators and plain italic symbols for their matrix representations. This is probably a good place to mention something I haven't come around to yet. One postulate, at least of canonical quantum mechanics, is that operators that represent measurable quantities are Hermitian. This means that their matrix representation remains exactly the same if you take the complex conjugate of every element and transpose the matrix, which is often denoted with a dagger. This requirement is made because then the eigenvalues, and hence expectation values, are real instead of complex. Now you can play around. Want to know what effect an operator has on a wave function? Multiply the matrix to the coefficient vector. Want to know the effect of two operators on any wave function? Multiply their matrices. What are the eigenvectors of the operator? Use the algorithms from linear algebra. As long as you don't leave the space spent by your orthonormal basis, you can throw anything you know about vectors and matrices at the mathematics and it will give you correct results. This is exactly what will happen in the next video. Until then, enjoy life if you can and don't be ashamed if you can't.